said, please continue to take notes. All right. And uh, let's get started. So yesterday we stopped here, which was the design stage, right? We talked about the different deliverables, the TED, we talked about the SAD, we talked about the UID, all right? And the roles and responsibilities of a BA, we will be providing requirements clarifications, we'll be following up on all open issues that are being raised by the technology team, as well as the architect as they are working on the design. You will start to handle any new requirements or change in requirements or modifications to requirements that are being requested by the business in the form of those change requests, right? And we talked about how we do ahead and do the impact analysis, how we go ahead and do the feasibility analysis uh, to determine, you know, are we going to be going ahead and prioritizing those changes or you know, the impact and the feasibility is coming out to be negative and we will not be prioritizing those changes, all right? We talked about the CCB, we talked about the CMO, which are the two different organizations that they will put together to manage any and all changes impacting the project. Any questions, guys? Um, okay. Ali, can you um, just go over the maybe show the definition on the on the screen or just if you can tell the definition of the ccb and ccmo ccb is change control board did you get that yep change control board and cmo is the change management office okay of course, some organizations may have it as a different name, but those are the most two common ones that I've heard of, okay? All right. Again, the design walkthrough will also be done, and the design is also signed off, typically by the architect and the technology head, right? Now that the requirements are done, the design is done, Time to start phase number four, which is the development stage. We're going to be going ahead and we will be developing our product, construction or the build phase is typically known as. And the output of, of course, the development or the construction build phase is the code or the software. In our example, of course, we are building the house. And who's the author? Of course, they are the programmers, the developers, or in our case, it would be the construction team. Right. So as the product starts to get built, while it is being built, we would also start to do dev testing, which is commonly referred to in-house testing. Dev testing, in-house testing. So as the product starts coming out, we need to start validating the product, right, during the development stage itself. And the development testing is divided into two different rounds. You have the unit testing, UT, which is also referred to as white box testing. This is the very first level of testing, white box testing, unit testing, done by the developers themselves, right? So as we talked about yesterday, there are two different types of developers. You may have front-end developers, you may have back-end developers, and you may even have full stack developers, ones that are capable of developing both sides, the front end and the back end. The front end being the user interfaces, the screens, the layouts, the back end being all the you know, interfaces, the calculations, the code to go ahead and fetch data, insert data, all of that good stuff, the back end function. So while the front end developer will develop his code, he will do unit testing on the front end. In the same way, the developer that develops the back end will unit test the back end. Why is it called unit testing? Because you're testing an individual unit of code, the unit that you as the developer developed. Okay. Once you have successfully completed the unit testing of your unit, your code, the next thing to do is to integrate the code, meaning you integrate the front end with the back end. And when the front end and the back end is integrated, that is when we will start to do the 
functional testing of the application. Functional testing, just like what it sounds like, we are testing the functions of the application. Another name for functional testing is black box testing. Okay. Since this particular functional testing and black box testing is being done during the development stage itself, we refer to this cycle of testing as BIP. What are we performing? We are performing BIP or UIT. What does it stand for? Development Integrated Testing or Unit integrated testing first we did the individual unit testing now we have integrated the units so we have the ability to do unit integrated testing this is being done by the developers who again develop that code so they're making sure that the code has integrated properly and the code is gelling well right there's no issues as well as you the BA will be validating the application and the testing the functionality of the application at this stage. So that is basically where you are bringing value add to the validation of the application code. All right. So the developers will be doing it. The tech leads will do it. The BA will do it. Even sometimes if you have a PM like me, I will come into development just to see how the application is looking and check the stability, check, you know, you know how the, the interface is looking, application is looking. So I'm not going to be doing a lot of heavy testing since I'm a project manager, right? But the BA will be doing a good amount of testing. Okay. So what does a BA do during the development stage? Well, you will continue to provide requirement clarifications and you will follow up on all open issues that are being raised by the technology team as they go ahead and they build the product. So they may have questions on the requirements. So you are there again to provide those clarifications to the development team. OK, also you will continue to handle those new requirements being requested in the form of those change requests so they don't stop. All right. You can get change requests all the way through the, you know, testing cycle. All right. And you start to prepare for the dev testing by writing your test scripts. OK. And we're going to be talking about test scripts and writing test scripts when we talk about the official round of testing and we cover the testing cycle itself. Any questions, guys? Uh, just a quick on the definition. The DIT was development integrated testing or developer integrated testing? Development integrated testing. Development. Okay, got it. Also, it's commonly known as dev testing, dev for development. Okay. A simple example I'll give you of this. Let's say you're building this house, right? And now, we need to test the lights in our bedroom, right? How would we go by testing our lights? We'd walk into the bedroom and what would we do? Switch on the lights. How? Uh, shouldn't we first make sure there's bulbs there? Well, it's fully integrated, right, OS? Okay. Right? It's kind of... Uh, you know, do you want it'll be a fully integrated system that you will test, right? Do you want like a? I mean, when you want like a super uh, specific answer, like the they would they would actually flip the switch. Correct. That's what I want. <laughs> okay. That's what I want. You're a BA. You have to be very specific in what you say. Absolutely. So you will step up to the light switch, and depending on what kind of switch it is, right? Uh, uh, say it. What if it was a dimmer switch? <laughs> There's no flipping it, right? You would either slide it up or you would move it counterclockwise or clockwise, right? Depending on what kind of dimmer switch it is. So yes, you have to be very specific depending on the kind of switch it is, right? Because each switch has its own functionality, right? So a uh, small question. Before testing this, I'm sure they tested the electricity, right? That, that was already done, right? 
No, that is would have been done by the developers themselves, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So yes, you should watch. So at the end of the day, right, we'll start doing a lot more checks when the damn thing doesn't work. <laughs> okay. That's when the real questions start popping in our mind, right? But if you come in, you have this regular toggle switch, right? On the wall, you will come in and you will flip the light switch up, correct? And when you flip the light switch up, what are you expecting to happen? You expect the lights to turn on and stay on. Correct, very good. So not only turn on to stay on, very good, right? You're expecting the lights to turn on and stay on, okay? And if you were to flip the light switch down, what are you expecting? Off and stay off. The lights to turn off and remain off, correct? These are actually two separate test cases that you just did. One, you tested the functionality of the lights to turn on, and the other test that you performed was to ensure the lights turned off. Everybody clear? These are two test cases. One is testing the turning on functionality, one is testing the turning off functionality. Everybody clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you came and you flip the light switch on and you see your lights turn on and they stayed on, did your test case pass or fail? Yes. Pass, why? Uh, because the work we have done, I mean, the electricity is coming and the lights are still on. How do you know the electricity is coming? Did you put your finger in the light switch to figure that out? No. Then? Let me ask you, what was your expected result? Turn on the lights. The lights will turn on, not turn on the lights. Turn on the lights is a function, not an expected output. Got to be careful with your sentence structure. What is your expected result? Lights to be on. Lights will turn on and stay on, right? So, did they? Yes. yes, so you met your expected output, correct? That is why your test case has passed. And when you flip the light switch down, what was your expected output? Uh, lights turning off. Lights would turn off and would remain off, right? Yes. Did you meet your expected output? Yeah. Yes. yes. That is why the test case passed. Clear? Now, what if you came in and you flipped that light switch on and the lights did not turn on? Did your test case pass? No. No. Did not pass. Why did it not pass? You didn't get your expected result. Correct. You did not get your expected result. Do you know the root cause for the failure? No. Not yet. What do you mean by not yet, Rehman? What are you going to be doing? It, it could be a bad bulb. It could be a bad switch. It could be and, no. And are you an electrician, Rehman? No, I don't know. So all I know, the outcome is not. So the what, why one. are you saying not yet? What are you looking to do? You're going to take the light switch apart? You're going to take the bulb apart? You're going to pull the wire apart? What are you planning on doing? That's the developers are... Uh, then why are you saying not yet? He wants to, what are you going to do? You're not to going to do anything, oh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to report that uh, expected result didn't meet the actual result, right? You're going to report that your test case has failed, period. Right, right, right. Right, it right. failed. Yes. Yeah. That is why it is called black box testing. Because it is a black box and you do not know the root cause of the failure. Do you understand? Right, right. There is a input and then there is a output. You are validating your input against your output and there is a big black box in the middle. 
You understand? So when you put your input in, if you do not expect to get your expected output, all you can do is raise a defect and report it because this is a black box. This is why we call this functional testing. Everybody clear? Yes. Functional testing is black box testing because we do not know what is occurring between the time you flip that light switch and the lights turned on. Do you understand? How many units are integrated in this system that we are trying to test? How many different units? What's the very first unit? What's the very first unit, guys? Uh, the light uh, circuit. Circuit. You think circuit is a unit? So, circuit is not a unit, yar. Circuit is a fully integrated system. That's why it's okay. called a circuit. Okay, okay. Switch. Switch. Number okay. one unit is your switch. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. What is the second unit? Where? Switch off the wire. Switch it off. No, what switch it off? Switch it off is a function. The switch is the unit. You understand? Yes. Okay. Then the wire. Then the wire. Then the bulb. Then yeah. The second. What's mm -hmm. the third? Bulb. No, not Wrong. Yet. No, not yet. The circuit uh, after that? Yes. What's connected on the other side of the wire? The fuse? Oh, not the fuse. Not yet. Oh. Another switch? So outside of the circuit that you're trying to test. The? The coils? Ball holder. The what? Holder, holder. Ball holder. Yeah. Okay. Ball holder. holder. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. the third unit. And the fourth unit is okay. a bulb itself. So each component is a unit and they get integrated. Okay. That is. Wouldn't it have been built in differently? Yes. Can't you unscrew each unit? Is an engine in a car a unit? It is. Yes. It is transmission a unit? Yes. yes. Yeah. Is your exhaust in a unit? Right, right. Is your suspension a unit? Is your headlights a unit? Mm -hmm. You think you can test any of them alone? No. Yes. But can we, I mean, test the vault oh, alone without not. Engine? Do you not test the engine before installing it in the car? Of course. Oh, okay. In the in fact, yeah, they do. Yeah. Then what is that testing called? Um, testing. Unit testing. Mm -hmm. Unit and testing. And when you have integrated all the units and you're driving the car. Got it. What are you doing? What kind of testing? Unit integrated Is testing. Happens, Unit integrated or functional, functional testing, right? Functional. You're testing functional. the functionality of the car, right? Oh, yeah. Sir? You gotta mute the mic. Uh, that wasn't me. I don't speak. That was not you. Then who was I that? I don't speak Indian. That was Indian? No, I would have known it was Indian. Nah, it definitely wasn't Hindi. That was not Hindi. Was that Hindi? Nah. That was me. That oh. was me. I apologize. <laughs> oh, okay. That was Rahman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You. you got you. <laughs> All right. Cappuccinos for the entire class, Rahman. Yes, 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 yes. Well, it's, no. like, well, it's like pushing her phone number right now. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Power code in this number. <laughs> sure, me. Yeah. <laughs> so that is unit testing versus functional oh, testing. testing. So unit testing is done with the individual unit. So for our 
light switch, do you think the switch itself was tested in the factory that it was produced? Yes. Yes, it was unit tested. Was the wire tested in the factory that it was produced? Yes. Was the bulb holder tested in the factory that it was produced? Yeah. And was the bulb tested in the factory it was produced? Right. Yeah. Then why the hell is it not working? There must be connection error. Connection error. Right. There can be an integration error. Right. Error. You right. open the circuit and see one of the wires is not connected to the light switch. <laughs> okay, there's the problem, right? Right. What if you took a 220 watt bulb or volt bulb and you put it into our 110 system? Are you expecting it to light up? No. No. Mm -mm. No, you're not. When it was tested in the factory, what system do you think they tested it on? 220. Standard. 220. Yep, 220. And which one are you trying to put it into? The one 120. 120. <laughs> what the hell are you expecting? You take Miracle. and you put it into a regular car that runs on gas. What are you expecting it to work? No. No. No, no. no. Right? So there can be problems in the integration stage, right? You right. see, and I'm going to sound a little racist here. You see one Chinese guy, one Japanese guy. To you, they both look oriental, and you're wondering why they can't talk to each other. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I, okay, that's a really rude example, but nah, hey, it happens, right? We need an interpreter in between them, right? That speaks both the languages, right. right? For the system to work correctly, right? So that is basically testing unit testing versus functional testing white box versus black box why is it called white box actually it should have been called transparent box because unit testing is actually testing the back end functionality right yeah but actually like think of it as as a watch right how do we test if a watch is working the functional way to test it is to look at the second hand, right? And if the second hand is moving, you know the watch is working, correctly? Right, 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 right. That's how we tested functionality because the casing of the watch is, let's say, gold. So it's solid. You can't see inside it, right? Mm -hmm. The casing was transparent. Would you be able to flip the watch backwards and you would see the gears moving on the back end? Yeah. You would, right? Yeah. That is unit testing, looking at the gears working on the back end. You understand? Right. But of course, it wouldn't sound so good saying transparent versus black. <laughs> so they just went white versus black. <laughs> Got it? Mm -hmm. So white box testing is the official back end testing, right? which is being, of course, done by the developers. We don't have the skill, right? We're not an electrician, right? I mean, look, I'll give you another example. You go into your bathroom. You turn your faucet on. There is no water coming out. Do you know why? No idea, right? No, you don't. Maybe, yeah, no idea. Maybe you can open the cabinet underneath and make sure at least the main valves are open. <laughs> right? We can at least do that. Same way with the light bulb, maybe I can take the light bulb out and I can put it into a different place to make sure that the bulb is working, right? At least that much testing I can do. But beyond that, I'm not going to be taking the damn faucet apart, the plumbing apart, right? What am I going to do? I'm going to call a plumber or a electrician, right? They right. are what we refer to as developers, right? They're the technicians. Right, they will start to take the system apart to see what's going on. Right, they will see is the problem with the light switch? Is there a problem with the wire? Is the bulb bad? Right, where the hell is the disconnect happening in the system? Only they have the ability to do it. Right, but we help them by telling them, Look, this is not working, that is not working, this is not working, that is not working, and they then try to fix it. And remember, this fixing and this identification is happening in the development stage itself. 
So why do we do depth testing? Because the sooner we catch these issues, the sooner can we resolve them. You heard the saying, right? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? <laughs> yeah. You heard that, right? Well, we have a saying in technology that says what happens in dev stays in dev. Okay. Got it? So this unit testing and this dev testing results are not shared with everybody. <laughs> okay? This only stays with the technology team. Right? Maybe your PM may get to know about it and your tech leads will know about it, but that's about it. We're not going to be sending any report out to business because to business, we are still in the development stage. You understand? The official round of testing is not here yet. It is number five. All right. So let's do a quick case study. Okay. Let's say I am your PMs. Okay. You guys work for me as your project manager, and we have developed this mobile application. Okay. And we're going to be doing some requirements on the mobile application in a little while also. But let's say we are in the development stage, and who wants to be a VA? Who wants to be a VA? Nobody wants to be a VA. Okay, that's very good. What the hell are you guys here for? I'm a VA. We all are. None of you said I want to be a VA. Who said I want to be a VA? I want to be. I want to be a VA. Yes. I want to be a VA. In in Hindi, there is there is a saying, "Derai Durastai." Anybody want to translate that one? Joey? What is it? I don't know. What is it? Better later. Better later. Better later. Better later. Yeah. No, that's not what that means. Yeah. What does it mean? Oh. No, oh, it means it's better late, but oh, the person okay. has time. Yeah. There I it means, like, it means I come late, but you got it. You come late, but you came with the right answer. Do you understand? Mm. It's different than better late than never. You understand? Yeah. That's a different thing. Mm. This one mm. means yes, you answered late, but you answered it right correctly. correctly. Mm -hmm. In other words, take the time before you just jump in. You understand? That's what this saying is. Right? Okay. All right. So who wants to be a BA? I want to be a BA. All right. So we'll Me. pick one. Who 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 does not talk a lot? <laughs> Since you missed yesterday. Ahiba? Yes. You ready to be a BA? Yes, I am. All right. So you're my BA. Who wants to be a tech lead? Nobody <laughs> wants to be a tech lead. We won't ask technical questions to the tech lead, okay? We're, 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 we're just doing it for a case study, all right? Okay. Who wants to be a tech lead? Want to do it? Do that. All right, who's I? I was there. I was there. Okay, Ozer is my tech lead, and Sahiba is my business analyst. Everybody ready? Yes. Yes. All right, what stage of the project are we in? Testing. Testing. No development. We're in the development. Development. The development. The first answer was wrong right off the back. Lovely. We are in the development stage, but during the development stage, we are also doing testing. 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 What kind of testing? Unit testing. Unit, Unit testing. testing and functional testing. Correct. In other words, you could say we are doing development testing, right? We are mm -hmm. testing what testing. we have developed, right? So of course, you know, Ozer's team. Who reports to there? The yeah, project manager. Project manager is reporting to a tech lead. No, the BA is reporting to me. BA is reporting to the tech lead. Oh my God. All right, homeboys, we got to get your thing. Well, uh, so report to Q. who? Doesn't Q like well, to us. Right. All right, answer the question. The BA reports to who? The uh, project management. Project manager. Project manager, the PM. Yeah. 
So who does Sahiba work for? Project manager. Project manager. Me. Yeah. I am the project manager. Remember? Oh yes, boss. <laughs> Sahiba, wake up! You should know who you work for. She hasn't got paid yet. <laughs> Well, she hasn't arrived at the job yet, it looks like. <laughs> Saiba? Yes. Yes. You gotta be interactive. If you're behaving this way as a BA, I'm looking for a new BA, Saiba. I apologize. <laughs> what do you mean you apologize? Pay attention. Who do you work for? I work for the PM. Yeah. The PM. And in this case, example, who's the PM? You. I forgot his name. I think um. Ali Afsar. Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Cyber is totally out of the cyber. Did you have your morning coffee? Red Bull. Whatever you're drinking. Don't drink Did Red you Bull. Have that this morning. Cyber. Yes. Are you okay? No, I'm sick. To so say that, no, I'm not feeling well, sir. Sorry. Yes, I'm no not feeling... problem. Feel better, but you gotta tell me how, how am I gonna know you're not feeling well? Communication is very important, guys. You understand? There is no problem if you're not feeling well. That's okay. Maybe that's why you were not there yesterday. Feel better, Saiba. I'm looking for Saiba's or replacement. I I will take it, but I want more salary. You are, you, I'm, 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 you're not gonna stop you, so you're not gonna... <laughs> what, what did you say? I'm, I'm having cutbacks. That's why I had to let Saiba go. She was too expensive. Yeah, but I, I it's, you're, you're needing a BA urgently right now. So I have to leave what I'm doing. I, I have all the stuff I'm doing. So yes, I yes, want yes. to increase. No, 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 no. You, you're not getting increased. Do you accept the job at the pay rate? Yes or no? That's all I need to know. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just manage it. No, you're supposed to say no. <laughs> so that's when I, when I go after another BA. You think you're the only ones in the market, Sayed? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll take it. I'll take the job. All right, oh yeah, it's, has, has, has graciously accepted the offer. Okay, lovely. All right, so oh yeah, we are in the testing and development stage, development stage, right? So we're doing dev testing. So I am your PM, okay? So I'm coming to you and saying, hey, oh yeah, we run across each other on the cooler, right? So you say, oh yeah, how's the dev testing going? What are you gonna say? It's going on, it's fine. No, it's no. fine. Remind me again, who are you? I'm a BA. BA. And BA's reply yeah. by it's fine, huh? No, you have to communicate. I said, look at the notes. So the how's the testing going along? It's fine. What the hell does fine mean? We have done the unit testing and uh, we've done the functional testing. What do you mean by V? I am. No I. You better not. You can't do unit testing. The development okay. team did. The development team did. It yes. They are done by developer. The done development developer team uh, completed okay, the so unit Okay, so the development testing. team has completed the unit testing on how many units? Um, on did this you scenario? guys think you get the entire code base delivered to you in one shot? No. No. Yeah. No, right? Just think about our house, right? Let's say you are the BA responsible for testing this house, right? What do you think is going to be the first deliverable coming out of this house? What's the first thing they're going to complete? Uh, foundation. A foundation, right? right? And would the people that have built the foundation, would they have tested the foundation? Yes, correct. Yes, yes they would have. There is your unit testing, right? <laughs> Before they start to put the uh, frame up, mm -hmm. right? Second thing that they will start building is the frame of the house, right? Right. Correct? But they better not build the damn frame till they unit test the... The foundation. foundation. The foundation. Because if we find problems with the foundation 
And let's say you did the frame, you did the roof. What do you want me to do? Pick the roof and the frame and put it to the side to fix the damn foundation? Mm. That would no. be, yeah. be disastrous. That would be disastrous, right? I so know. when you start to do unit testing, you test the unit for this purpose. The last thing you want to do is integrate the whole damn house and figure out that, oh shit, the basement has got problems. And we need to redo the basement. What are you going to do with the whole house that's standing on top of the basement? What are you going to pick it up and put it to the side? What do you think this is like? Of course not. Right? So you will start to do unit testing first on the basement. Once the basement has been unit tested, the BA may come and he may look at the basement and he may validate the basement, right? Right. And then the team will start putting the frame up. Once the frame is up, BA will come in again and start to look at the frame. And do you then you when you start it? putting the roof on, that's another unit. You will test the unit of the roof, right? Right. Right. The plumbing, the electrical, the HVAC, that's way down the road. <laughs> You understand? Right. So not every unit will be delivered to you at the same time. For example, if you were building a mobile app, what's one of the very first functionalities we interface with when it comes to a mobile app? Can make a call. Huh? Mo mobile app, no. the call? What? The no. no, app is working fine. Correctly. What do you mean the app is working fine? You sound like a doctor telling the patient, are you feeling good today? What? I mean, like the function of the app, if it is created you for When you go to the doctor, the first question the doctor asks you is, are you okay today? <laughs> or do you think the doctor asks you, so how, you, you know, what, what brought you here in today, right? Understood? So there's something wrong, right? That, that he's here for, right? He's not feeling well. He's got a toothache. He's got a headache. He's got something, right? Right. So, so, the, first, the, first, that problem. so the first thing with the mobile app would be to actually determine what you want the result to be. That would be the first. Oh, yeah. What is the very first function of any application? What is the first? O thing open the app. Open the app, yeah. But to open the app is not a function. You're just launching it. But after you launch it, what do you do? What's the first module of the application that you interface with? Uh, access login. Login. Mm -hmm. That is the very first function, right? Right. When you approach a house, what's the very first thing you do in the house? Door, doorbell. Door. You open the damn door. <laughs> yeah. Right? So what's the first thing that you would test on a house if it's fully built? The door, right? Yeah. You ain't gonna be able to test the basement until unless you test the door first, right? Right. If it's a fully integrated house. Right? Right. Right. So login is always the very first module that typically gets built because that is your primary gateway into the application. Mm -hmm. Right? So right. login will be one of the very first modules to come in. You understand? So when you as a BA, if you are my BA, you should be telling me, Ali, we have started testing, you know, module A, B, and C, right? And on A, we have completed about 40% of the testing, right? On module B, we have completed 20% of the testing. On the final module, we have just started it, so we've only completed 10%. You see the details I'm providing you? Right. How the hell did you come up with 40%? What is 40% based on? Um, nothing. Nothing? So you just gave me a number out of the sky? No, you have done some. No, no, no. Basically, how many units needs to be tested and how it's many have been done? 40%, that's what I mean. What do you mean it's not supposed to be sent? You work for me. What do you mean you're not supposed to send? What team are you part of right now? Uh, 
development development team what team yeah. am i part of yeah what team there's two sides right to the project which are the two sides uh, the development and testing no yeah development no, 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 no. The same side business and development Take business, business and technology, technology. Business yeah business and, and technology, technology. Right. yes right yeah. So BA, you're part of business or tech? Mm -hmm. business. 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 Tech. If you are doing development testing, you're part of tech. Mm -hmm. How can you be part of business? Who do you report to? Project manager. Uh, project manager. Part of which side? The tech. Tech. Then how the hell did you become business? Who do you interface with? Mm -hmm, got it. No, answer, who do you interface with? The project manager of a uh, uh, tech team. No, Rema, the question was, it should have been, which phase are we talking about? <laughs> uh, okay, right, right, phase-wise. Because you interface with different people during different phases. Got it, okay. Have I not taught you that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Who did you interface during the requirements gathering stage? Business. Business, because the inputs are coming from business. Mm -hmm. Who are you interfacing during the design? Business? Uh, no. No, no, the architects. No. Architects, tech, right? Yeah. Because they are doing the design. Now, if they have a question or a query, like where the hell are the requirements for my doors, then yes, you have to go back to business. Mm -hmm. But typically, you are there to answer the questions of tech right during the design stage you are representing business but you are interfacing with tech who do you think you're going to interface with during the development stage the developer the tech the developers yeah. right who else yeah yeah what are they trying to build they're trying to build the application the software the code mm -hmm. and if they have questions on the requirements who are they going to ask the business analyst, right? They're not going to go to business stakeholders, the project sponsor and folks. No, that's what you're there for. Right? And when you start to do dev testing, in-house testing, and you're finding problems, who are you working with? Developer. Of course. You're not going back to business and saying, by the way, guys, uh, the login is not working. Do you know what's going on? You're going to go ahead and tell this to your project sponsor. No, no, no. Think, think what's going on. Think what's happening around you. Mm -hmm. Everybody clear? Mm -hmm. So if so, I, the project manager, have you doing dev testing, it is to make sure the application is stable, working. We don't have many problems because what's the next stage coming up? Testing phase. Testing. Testing. Actual testing phase, right? And do I want the testing cycle to go smoothly? Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And how do I make sure that the damn QA and UAD will run smoother? But By doing? In development testing. Dev testing. Dev testing. Okay. Right? Yeah. If my car has a lot of problems, do I want the official testing team to go ahead and do it and report 500 problems with my car? No. No. Of course not. How do I reduce that noise? By making sure the damn thing gets tested during development itself. Yeah. And by making sure if there are problems, I address that so that <coughs> by the time QA gets it, it's a more stable, better version. Right? right. right. Why do we do QA before UAT? Because by the time UAT, the actual damn business users start coming and looking at it, it's even better. Remember we talked about refining gold? Yeah. yeah. Right. When the damn gold is in development, it's like 10 or 18 carat. Mm -hmm. And what do we want our UAT to have? 24 carat. You understand? Mm -hmm. How do we get it to 24 carat? We beat it. 
we beat the hell out of it as early as possible because the earlier i found i find issues the the faster you fix faster it. i resolve it oh yeah you do laundry at home yes let's say you wash the clothes in the washer okay mm -hmm. then your dryer broke down what do you have to do with these wet clothes now um i'll take it take the clothes out and put them on your leather couch <laughs> no what are you gonna uh, do with them after we can uh, like spread them outside or take take it out out dry them in the back dry them right yeah alternative yeah. way to dry you're gonna put them on a on a wire or something right Right. right. So, oh, yeah. These clothes will be hanging where? In your front yard or in your backyard? My backyard. Okay. Why not? Why not the front yard? You don't want your neighbors to look at your whitey tidies or your lingerie? Yes. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> that is why we do dev testing. Mm -hmm. Because the official round of testing is your front yard. You understand? Yeah. And when the QA and the UAT reports go out, they go to everybody on the project. And everybody on your project can see your husband's white tight is hanging on the front yard. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. Yes. That's why we say what happens in Dev stays in Dev. Stays in Dev. <laughs> so whatever shitty code your shitty developers has written, <laughs> we need to stay in out. those. <laughs> You understand? Okay, get it, get it. So that's why I am making the developers test. I'm making the tech lead test. I'm making the damn BA test. And anybody else that works for me better test it too. So I have a question for our uh, PM, project manager. Yes, Revan. Okay, so when you ask me uh, how many units has been tested, say 40%, 30%, and yes. so do you expect me to like, check every single witness every single test or basically get the result Raman, from the developer very simple it's very simple what is the testing based on uh you test based on unit and function it's the r word Raman. what's the r word besides oh, Raman big with r requirement the requirements right krd krd yeah not k what the hell is krd Oh, sorry, a requirement. Yeah, yeah, sorry. BR. The word BR. you were looking for was K B K B R. K B R. Yeah, yeah. Good news station. Yeah. It's gonna be smooth next week. Trust me. Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. So yeah. KBR, KBR key yeah. requirements is what you're testing, right? Yeah. So, so you see it says here that the BA will start to write test scripts. Mm-hmm. That is what you will write. The 40% is based on the test scripts you developed to validate it. For example, if you wrote 20 test cases for validating the login functionality, mm -hmm. okay? And so far you have tested 10 out of the 20 test cases for login. What percentage are you done with the testing? I got that. What I'm trying to saying that okay. so BA needs to run all these tests. It's not the developer is running the test, right? Yes. Who, who is going to do it? You. Okay. And developer. And tech lead. Okay. okay. After you developed it, what the hell are you doing there? What is your value add in development? Tell me. Are you coding? No. Then what the hell are you doing? If you fire your ass. What do I have you for in development stage? Tell me. We will provide the requirement to developer. Okay. Once you provided the requirements to the developer, which was, by the way, in the requirement stage, mm -hmm. right? not in the development stage, right? The design is also complete. Why do I need a BA in development? Tell me. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, the things we ask, uh, they delivered it. And all, how are you doing that? Was that? 
By testing it. By testing it. You got it? So you gather the requirement. Now you are making sure that the requirement has been delivered in the code, right? Right. 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 That's what you're doing. You still through, got to be through testing. Huh? Through, test, through testing. Through testing, right? When do you know the function application is doing what it's supposed to do? <laughs> when you test it. Okay. Okay. Do you stand outside of a car and know that the car is working correctly? Huh? No. No. How do you know the car is doing what it's supposed to do? By testing. By driving it. Okay. How else are you going to validate? Mohammed? Mute. I don't know what Mohammed you do. Uh, I don't know if your, your, your mic is like grabs the most static out of anybody in this class. So you oh, think? I'm yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry. I just left it open. I didn't notice. So. Ah, yeah, you, you, your mic is extremely sensitive. Speaks up for everybody in class. <laughs> yes, uh, o o o Oye has moved from coffee to lunch now. <laughs> All right. So, Oye, when I ask you how the testing is going, your report, you actually should be sending me a weekly report on the DIT saying Ali, these modules have been tested. This is the percentage tested. This is the number of issues we have found. These how many issues have already been resolved? These are still pending because that is how I know. Are we ready to go to QA or not? You got it? Got it. So let me ask you, Oye, how do you know when to test which module? Um, I write the script. Yeah, that that I got. So you developed your scripts, right? So how after do you know that okay, I can test login. I can test my profile. I can test making a transfer. I can test customer service. How do you know you can do these things? When the developer finishes the. And how do you know when the developer is finished? They would um, let me. They will let you know. <laughs> okay. So there yes. has to be a functional testing plan, UIT plan. That is functional testing plan is in testing cycle. So you, it, okay. This is dev integrated dev, testing plan. Dev integrated testing plan, yeah. Okay, I'm getting. So started. before that even, you would have probably been leverage to report against the development itself. In yeah, other words, they will report to me. Who? No, no, no. I mean, when they finish one unit, uh, they're going to report to the BA. They're going to report to you. They don't work for you. Why would they report to you? You will go and find out from them. They will not oh. report anything to you. Okay? So, since you work for the PM, I may leverage you to say, okay, send me a weekly dev report by talking to the tech leads. Remember, tech lead is your peer. You understand? Both of you reporting to me, right? Right. So on a weekly basis, you may be getting together with all the different tech leads and telling them, telling me that Yali basement development is at 20%. Ali basement development is at 40%. Ali, framing is just being initiated. We have already received the material for the roofing. You know, such and such day, the guy is coming in to put in the windows. Such and such day, this is happening. We have the heating and plumbing guy coming on on this day. We have the electrical team going to be starting there on this day, and we're expecting them to complete it by this day. This is a project plan. You got it? Yes. So it is based on the project plan that you have the start of the development and the complete of the development. And when the development completes, that's where the testing begins. You understand? Yes. So that is how you know that login module 
will be available for you to test on say March 15th. You got it? So you should be tracking to that date saying that on March 15th, login module should be ready to test and you need to have your test cases ready to execute on that date. You understand? And then you will test the login module for the next five days. And in the five days, you should be able to complete all 20 of your test cases. You got it? In the same way, the next module is coming out on this date. Testing will start on this date, and I'm talking about dev testing. This is not the official round of testing, right? Because you're doing unit testing and you're doing dev integrated testing. You understand? Yes. So you are actually even working with the development team and reporting against the progress of development itself. You understand? Yeah, let me, um, I don't think I um, uh, I understand um, the the question you asked me. I know you've explained it, but I still don't, I don't the get it yet. Was, how do you know when you will be yes. able to test? Yes, yes. So and that yeah. is based on the project plan. To be more precise on the development plan itself, which is a part of the overall project plan. You understand? You already know development will start on this day and development will complete this day. And from that date, testing will begin. And this day, testing will end. And this is the date we are going to go live, right? That was all agreed upon in the planning phase. Agreed? Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. In the planning phase, in the project charter, you have your milestones, correct? Correct. And the milestones say that planning will start here, planning will end there, requirements gathering will start here, and requirements gathering will end here, and design will start here, and design will end here, and development will start here, and development will end here, and the testing will start here, and the testing will end here, and then the release will happen on this date, and the application will be live on such and such date. What happens if those, um, those dates are not um, accurate? Let's say um, they, they hang me. Okay. <laughs> because it is my job to ensure that you're doing your job as well as everybody else on the project. Okay. Got it. And if you come to me the day that you have to deliver the requirements and you say, Ali, I'm going to be delayed, I'm going to be looking for a new VA that day. Oh, you mean? Absolutely. <laughs> there ain't no babysitting with me. Okay. Okay. You want that big bucks? You want your yes. rate? Better not come back with that answer. Um, let me ask a question. So, if you, uh, if a BA, if I'm working as a BA on a project in um, California, okay. and um, I we get to the uh, uh, dev um, development um, stage. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to, of course, develop the, uh, the testing. Do I have mm -hmm. to be in person? Do I, do I? Does that mean I'm going to have to travel over What are there? you testing? Oh, yeah. Are you testing a house? Then yes, you have to be at the premises of the house because you can't right. test a house remotely. Yes, I just wanted to, I know, I just wanted but to. If you're so. testing an application, you can't test an application remotely. Right. Right? Right. If you want to test a mobile app, Guess what? You've got to have a test device that that mobile app is installed on. Mm -hmm. How else are you going to test that mobile app? These are all black box testing, and we... these are all black box. Yeah. Okay. Not technical. Okay. okay. What do you mean by technical? No, you can. Basically, I have technical. to be a uh, developer to test it. Yeah, that's not. That's what I mean. No. You click on launch the app, and when you click on the tile, the damn application is not launching. You gonna report that? No. Yes, correct. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes, correct. You, you, you're hearing your dirty laundry outside. No. You're gonna report it to the damn tech lead. Right, right, right. I didn't right. say you're gonna report it to business. No, 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 no. It hasn't even been released to business yet, right? We are in the development stages. This is a dev copy on your damn test device. You understand? There yes. are development copies. There are QA copies. Then there are UAT copies. There are three separate environments. 
UAT does not come into QA to test. UAT does not come into Dev to test. You understand? Yeah. Right. They have their own environments. On my mobile device, I can have three versions of the same application installed. One is the dev version, one is the QA version, one is the UAT version. Because as a BA, I am helping all three. You understand? Mm -hmm. When QA reports a defect, they are reporting it on the QA environment. When UAT is reporting a defect, they are reporting it on the UAT environment. And when you are testing, you are testing which environment? BA. The BA. Which is going to be the most advanced? Which is the most advanced? Oh, that was a question. Yes. The BA. Or the environment. Oh, yeah. Which is the most advanced environment? Dev, QA, or UAD? Which has the latest code base? Latest. Latest would be UAT. UAD. Wrong. Dev. Dev. Oh, Dev. Only when the release has been Dev certified does it go to QA. Correct? Yes. When it has been QA certified, it goes to? UAD. UAD. So UAD has the oldest, actually. Because Dev is already working on the? Oh, next okay. version and fixing everything that is being reported, right? Right. And they might have even released the next version to QA. And QA is working on it, but QA hasn't certified it. You understand? Understood. So the most latest code base will be in the dev environment. Development. The one that we are working on right now. And we are fixing all the issues and everything. Once we get that working, that gets released to QA. QA does their testing on it. When they are comfortable with it, they release it to UAT. So the UAT is the highest environment, but doesn't have the latest code base. The latest code base is in Dev, Dev being worked on. <laughs> you understand? Yes, sir. Yes. So that's what it is. So, so even though the BA during the testing cycle, what's coming up next? So let's talk about the testing. So let's say OA you and who was my uh, tech lead? Zer. Oh, Zer. Okay. So let's say OA. We you 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 like to say everything is fine. I don't want you to say everything is fine. <laughs> I want you to say we are having problems. Say we are having problems. Okay. No, okay, it's not it. having problems. We're having problems. What kind of problems, Oye? Um, the, 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 the functional testing uh -huh. um, is uh, okay. we, we're having um problems with the. Do I have to be specific about the exact yeah. thing? Okay. Yes. You have so, to say we are having. So okay, so there can be two problems, right? Number one. Ozair hasn't released the damn code to you yet to test. <laughs> <laughs> if he hasn't released the code to you to test, how the hell have you been able to test? You haven't. Oh, you didn't tell me, oh, hey, Ozair hasn't released the code. Well, but they, you said, I asked you, how's the testing going? And you should have told me we're having problems, right? That's what you said, right? Yes. Right. And then I asked you, what kind of problems? The worst kind is, Oh, there hasn't released the code yet. <laughs> so that means testing hasn't even started. Okay. So my question to you, first, my, I'm going to be screaming at you, Oye, and I'm going to be screaming at you and saying, why have I not been informed of this yet? When were you expecting the code? And you better tell me, we were expecting it Monday, and today is like a Wednesday or something like that. You understand? Okay. If you tell me I was expecting the code two weeks. You're firing me. Oh, Bill, you first I'm going to like uh, put you through a, uh, you know, spin cycle before I fire you. OK, better. <laughs> right. I'm going to make you walk through a car wash. 
you know? <laughs> so, remember, you're supposed to be sending me reports on a weekly, weekly basis regarding de development that has a dev start date and a dev end date for login module. Mm -hmm. Well, when that dev end date comes for the login, what is the start? The start is for your dev testing, correct? Correct. So that report is coming to me on a weekly basis saying that, OK, such and such. So if you are delayed by two weeks. Why am I not aware of it? I should be made aware of it, right? Right. At the same thing, you should not go screaming and shouting to me. Oh, it did not give me the code. When were you expecting it? Yesterday. Well, did you talk to us? No, I haven't talked to him yet. Well, why haven't you not talked to Zero, eh? <laughs> right? I'm jumping the gun. Go, I'm go, supposed to talk go. to Ozer. Ozer. Right? All right. Yeah, you and him are like, you know, on the same ship. Remember, you, me, him, we are all on the same ship. If the ship goes down, we are all going for a swim. And I don't, can't swim. And you can't swim. Oh, God. We got a life vest for you, eh? <laughs> All right? So you need to be coordinating things with was there. So let's say this application was delayed two weeks. What do you think I'm going to tell you? I'm going to ask, get Ozer in the office. Ozer? Yes, I'm here. What the hell's going on, man? Oye is saying that she was supposed to have started her dev testing two weeks ago. What's going on? So we will be working with our developer. Uh, to check. Well, of course, you're working for your developer. Developer reports to you, yeah. <laughs> right? Remember, developers report to you. You report to me, right? Yes, correct. That's how to, right? So there must be some delays and stuff, right? So one yes. of the things you can say is that Ali, we found a lot of problems in the unit testing, and we also found problems when we went to integrate it, right? Okay. So that remember, that's what you guys are doing before she starts her testing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yes, Your front end developer is developing the front end. The back end is developing their back end. They can run into problems with their unit testing, right? So that is why you are having delays. You understand? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Another reason can be you are waiting for a third party dependency. You understand? Yeah, that might be possible. And they have not delivered the code piece or they haven't delivered their interface. You understand? So let's say I am interfacing with uh, AMS for login. OK. So AMS is our login authentication mechanism. If AMS does not give you their interface to utilize, how the hell is login going to work? Right. Right. You need that interface and you should have unit tested. They will test. They will unit test the interface on their end. Then you will integrate the front end with their back end. You understand? So when you enter the user ID and the password, that user ID and password goes to AMS. AMS validates it and sends you the response back. User ID password good or bad. You understand? But if AMS has not done their job. How? Are you going to integrate? How is OEA going to be testing? She won't, right? Yes, correct. Right. Yes. But my question is, why did you two not inform me of this shit so I could light a fire under AMS's side? That's my job, right? That is why transparency is so important. That is why you, BA, and you, Tech Lead, are supposed to keep me up to speed. Keep, right, uh, communicating with each other. Correct. You talk to each other. Talk to me. You shouldn't be fighting. You should not be fighting. You only fight when the damn thing is when like the thing is no, when you're not giving me what I want. Okay. Right. So it's not just giving him. See, when when you should have been already talking to us there. Mm -hmm. And you should know that if you were expecting your code base to come out on March 31st, Monday, for instance. Right, you should already be knowing that oh, there, I'm getting my code on Monday, right? I gotta start unit testing it. I mean, I gotta start functional testing it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, there should have told you 
Well, you know what? Uh, we are having some problems. Uh, we might not be able to give you the application code on Monday, but you know, I'll try to give it to you by Wednesday. OK. Can you take a two, three day impact? Yeah, sure. You can take a two, three day impact. Not a big deal. All right, fine. When is it comes around? Oh, there, where's my code? You should be asking him that. You understand? Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, Ozer is like, mm, I'm still running into problems with this, with that. Listen, Ozer, I can wait till next Monday, but if I don't get the code base next Monday, I'm going to escalate this or I'm going to let Ali know that we are delayed by a week. Okay? okay. And come Monday, if you don't get the code base from Ozer, you should come and talk to me and let me know, Ali. Uh, we are delayed with our start of our uh, dev testing uh, because Ozair and team, they're having some problems. And that's when I'll talk to Ozair, but this is good communication, you understand? Understood. Right? The last thing I want to hear is like, I should have started testing four weeks ago and I still haven't tested. I'm going to like blow a cap. You understand? Yes. <clears throat> In the same manner, let's say the testing did go well, and I asked both of you, hey, oh yeah, hey, oh there, are we ready to go to QA? QA is supposed to start on Monday, March 31st. What are you guys going to tell me? Yes, Ali, we have tested majority of the functionalities. The application looks stable. Uh, you know, there's no major critical defects that we can see right now. I think we are good to start Monday. Then I'm going to say, OK, Ozer, make sure, you know, the packages are ready, the files are ready. You know, have you gotten the release notes out? Everything is ready to hand over to QA on Monday? Yes, yes. you know, we have already started working with the QA manager. You know, they have the environment is ready to install the code. We are looking to good. Everything looks fine. We should be fine to release it. Great. That's a good status. Understood? You are literally lockstep. You, the BA, and the tech lead. Understood? Yes. And when you give me the thumbs up, you know, I might even log in myself and I might play around with the application because, you know, I don't trust OA from what she's saying. Oh, Lord. And Ozer, oh, forget, past experience has taught me not to listen to anything Ozer says. <laughs> you know? So I might log in myself and, you know, and if you oh, told me everything you. was good and if I find problems, oh, God help you both. That means you lied to me. All right, and it could be that the application that I'm logging into could have other reasons that it wasn't working when I logged in, right? Maybe your but, wife, your computer is not good at that no, time. No, 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 I'm logging into the actual instance of the application, right? Okay. Or maybe... The application that's on my mobile device is an older version. <laughs> that wasn't stable. And you're like, Ali, which version are you testing? Well, I have version 1.6. We, uh, well, we are already up to 1.0. <laughs> you know, we're on 2.0. I'll say, okay, put it on my device. So you're going to then put the latest dev version on my device, right? And uh, then it'll be okay. So it happens, guys. So remember, I'm not taking updates on my device all the time. You understand? Yeah. So it can be that the that the version that is sitting in dev is now more advanced, right? Than the one that is sitting on my device. I got to update my device's version. Clear? Okay. I have a question. Like, what about the bugs? Sometimes it came. Like, uh, what do you mean? Sometimes they always come. Yeah. So what to resolve? Like, when I what to resolve? Myself, there, you and your team is supposed to resolve these bugs. Yeah, usually it's like when we tested everything, it doesn't show anything. Like after two days, you try it. It didn't show anything, and then when someone else tested it, it showed bugs. Yes, right. Why? Maybe in an application issue, or maybe something in the back end. So go and figure it out, right? Aren't you taking it? Yes, correct. Yeah. Then why are you coming to me? Go figure it out. Okay. Um, quick question, Ali. Yeah. Hello? Yes, go ahead. 
Uh, so, so basically, so as far as, you know, I've, before getting into this uh, program, the, you know, BA program, um, so I just wanted to get this clear. So basically a business analyst is not just information gathering and actually managing and kind of overseeing the process, but he actually physically is also involved in actual physical testing. Yes. Okay. BA Otherwise, BA. after the requirement stage is done, you should be looking for a new job, boys. Okay. Right. That was the question I asked. So, hey, right. What is what is your value add in development stage? What is your value add in design stage? What is your value add in testing cycle? You got to answer that question as a BA. Got it. Right. That's why these paragraphs are here. What are you doing? Right. So memorize this. Got it. Yeah, All no, right. I understand. I understand. I just wanted to kind of get that clarification. That, that is yes, the difference yeah. between a full life cycle BA versus a BA who just does requirements and then rolls off. Yeah. And if you're one of those, you're going to be looking for jobs all over the place. And that is not the kind that they are looking for, right? Because now they're looking for BAs who are like come project manager kind of role, right? Junior PM and BA. Uh, you have okay, that's, that's, with the team. You have that's what I was. Team. That's what I was noticing is basically kind of like the BA is actually hopping around and actually overseeing multiple phases. So almost kind of seems like a project manager in the making. Well, you, 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 you that's so. Uh, you see myself, right? Started as a BA, became a senior business analyst, became a project manager, was a requirements manager, now a program manager, right? Right. That's how we go up the food chain. All right. Any questions here, guys? So, Oye and Ozer both gave me the thumbs up. We have now released the application to the testing, testing cycle. Right? And that's when QA, quality assurance, will begin. Again, QA is also black box testing only, aka functional testing. It is just being done by an external testing team, a QA team. OK, these are testers who are other than your development leads, your tech leads, your BA. They are a separate team. OK. Again, what will they be doing? They will be executing their test scripts. They will be executing their test cases and raising defects. And those defects will be triaged and looked at by both the BA and the tech lead. And then we will be ensuring that we are timely addressing those issues. Same thing we will do when QA certifies the code and releases the code to the next stage of testing, which is UAT, user acceptance testing. This is again another form of black box testing, functional testing being done by a UAT team, as well as those actual business users that you engaged with for doing your requirement gathering. So those SMEs, the client manager, the project sponsor, they may have delegates or other members that they have given the responsibility to go ahead and test the application. Okay. So what is the BA doing? BA will continue to provide requirement clarifications and will follow up on all open issues being raised by the testing team. You will continue to handle the new requirements being requested in the change request. Yes, they will still be coming. BA now acts as a liaison, meaning a bridge between the testing teams that are doing the testing and the development team and will be providing ETAs. Anybody know what an ETA is? Estimated time of uh... arrival. Yeah. Estimated time of arrival on all defects or bugs which are being raised by the testing team after discussing the defect with the development leads. OK, so in the beginning, you were a bridge between business and technology. Now this bridge has swung to the other side of tech where testing is sitting. So testing is executing the test cases, raising defects, those defects are being triaged on a daily or a weekly basis. 
and being discussed with the development leads. The development leads are making sure those are being addressed by the developers that worked on that code base, providing fixes, identifying the root cause of the problems, and then providing patches to the testing cycle on a timely basis. Everybody clear? So after requirement gathering, testing cycle is one of the major, major parts of a BA. So you should have already been testing this application in your which stage? Dev stage. In your dev stage, right? So this should nothing be new. Now let's say, remember, laundry is now hanging where? Outside. In the front yard. Right? Because these reports, QA report and UAT report is going to the entire project team. Correct? Mm -hmm. So let's say QA just started. And after one week of testing, on their report, they're seeing an initial pass percentage of 65%. Okay? And after reporting 65% pass rate, that means how much is fail? 35. 35. So in other words, if 20 test cases were ran, how many passed? You said. 65% pass. So out of 20 test cases, how many have passed? Um, say 15. No. 13. 13. How many? 13 have passed. How many have failed? Seven. Seven have failed. Understood? Do you think this is a good pass percentage or a bad pass percentage? Oh, good. Not good. No, bad, bad percentage. It's a bad percentage. And after one week of testing, the testing team is reporting 20 defects. And out of the 20 defects, four of them are critical, 10 of them are major, you know, six of them are minor. Absolutely bad. Who do you think is in my office again? BA. And? Tech lead. Tech lead. Namely, oh, oh, yeah, gonna be in the office again. And she ain't gonna be alone there. Yeah, and Jose. Jose. Yes, correct. So, Jose. Madam and Mr., you want to explain to me why am I seeing a pass percentage of 65 and why am I seeing four critical defects in one week of testing? That means we didn't, um, we didn't, we didn't actually from the dev testing or maybe we lied or something exactly was my first question will be what the hell kind of dev testing did you guys do we lied jose we well, lied it, look it doesn't have to be lied right the first answer that should come off your mind is ali let us have a look at the report i might get upset about that answer too saying what the hell do you mean by look at the report you haven't seen the report well ali we just got to the office okay Go have a look at the report. I haven't drank coffee. And I want you back in the office in one hour. You got it? So what could possibly happen in this scenario? It could be, first thing you got to do is, first of all, see what the hell the damn four defects are, right? Four critical defects. Then make sure those defects are reproducible in the dev. Because remember, you tested in dev. If they are reproducible in dev now you're in trouble you understand if i can reproduce a defect in qa and in dev then you definitely missed it right yes you're explain gonna again what you mean you can reproduce remember the dev is the lower environment qa is the higher environment right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you should go and you should first try to reproduce it in QA, the one that they're reporting it in. Then try to reproduce it in dev. 
if you can reproduce it in both places, then it's clearly a problem. You understand? If you are not able to reproduce it in QA, first thing you should do is reach out to the QA lead saying, yo, I just tried to reproduce this issue and I'm not seeing this. What's going on? When you say reproduce, what do you mean by reproduce? So they are saying that they're not able to submit a transfer. That's it, that's the defect. Oh, OK. What are you going okay. to do? You're going to try to replicate that issue, right? Right, right. Oh, OK. You're going to yeah, make yeah. sure. Let's see what you're saying. You're going to make sure that what he's saying is legit, right? Mm -hmm. Say if he's telling you that the light is not turning on in the bedroom, what are you going to do first thing? You're going to run into the bedroom and you're going to turn the light on, right? Yes. And if the light is... If the light turns on, on, what are you going to do? You're going to say to the tester, what the hell are you talking what, about? Bro, what's wrong with you? Exactly. Right? Okay. Okay, got it. Because you are getting screamed at saying, why the hell didn't you catch the light? <laughs> you understand? Understood. So you will test there. So let's say the turn light did not turn on. Now you'll go into the dev environment and you'll run the same test case there. And let's say the light didn't turn on in the dev environment off. also. Okay. That's what you mean by reproduce. Okay. All right. So it's it's occurring in both environments. It's occurring in the QA and dev. So now your question is, why did you not catch it? Well, what could have happened is that that light was working earlier. Then in a later version, somebody broke that light. Oh, it's new. It's, it's new not new. Way. They might have changed something in the light switch or something like that. And when you tested it, it was working in an earlier version. Then they went and they updated the light to an LED light. And as part of that, they might have broken some other things or they made some wiring changes on the other side that impacted this one. Okay. Remember, you're not going to be coming back and checking that light switch every damn day. Right. You checked it once, it's working, okay, you're satisfied. But what's the guarantee that Ozair's team didn't go ahead and make some changes in the fuse box in the panel and then forgot to connect the damn light switch back in? But and they're supposed to let me know if they want to change if they're is it, they're not going to be change? telling you every code change they're going to do no 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 what i'm we're trying to say is that so when we finish that uh this uh the stage and they probably went to change something with that they will not, not let you know because what they made the change has its own functional test which you will run you understand okay there is a lot of wires that come into that fuse panel. Right. You know? So let's say they, they install the jacuzzi in the bathroom. And as part of that, they by mistake loosen this one and then tighten it again. When they tell you which function is now available for you to test, J jacuzzi, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to go and test the jacuzzi, right? Right. Are you going to go and test that light switch also? No. No. Do you know that as part of the, installing the jacuzzi wiring, they screwed the damn other one? Right, right. It was working earlier? That's true. No, right? But when you come, now you see, oh shit. Yeah, the light is not working, but damn it, I tested this. It was working earlier. Something happened, right? Mm-hmm. But it happens, oh, okay. right? But now I see how you, it could possibly happen. Yeah, but if you had a record, right, saying that, okay, I had a test case to test this light, and I tested this light, and I tested it on this date, and it passed, at least you can tell your PM, Ali, I tested this on such and such date. Here's the test case. It was working then. I don't know why it's not working. I'm going to ask you, is it working right now in dev? No, Ali, it's not working in dev either. All right, Uzair, what the hell did you do? <laughs> but before you identify what you do, please fix the damn issue first. 
You understand? Right. So there, you better go and you better fix that issue. And then you can go and do a postmortem to figure out what happened. Why was it working on day A and not working on D, day D? You understand? That's correct, yes. So I've had managers that are like crazy like me that will tell you, when you find out who did it, I want you to fire his ass. No. Oh. What? Don't worry, Oye. It ain't going to be firing you. Jose is going to be firing one of his deck developers. Because I can't have careless and crazy people working on this project. I've had managers like that. That have forget about that. I've had very technically savvy managers that have opened the freaking application code and looked at the application code and said, who wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> and it has the developer's name next to it. Who wrote that? And he's saying, I want that guy out of here. Wow. All right. Copy development is never good. That's why we do dev testing to identify shit like that and fix it before it gets through. But this one testing. got through the gates and is now happening in QA. God forbid, it, let's say, escaped the QA and got into UAT. Oh, God. That's even worse because dev testing didn't catch it. QA didn't catch it. It's been identified by... A lot of you people will be going home. No, not a lot of people will be going home, but a lot of people will be getting screamed at. Yeah, well, yes. Okay, there's going to be a few finger pointing happening back and forth. Okay? You know Obama's healthcare website, right? Yes. yes. You heard of that? Yes, right. You know it crashed within the first hour that it was launched. Oh, no, I don't know that. Yep. The very first hour it was crashed, uh, it was released to the users. It crashed within an hour. Wow. Why? Nobody freaking tested it. During the dev and the QA. Yeah, they totally skipped that whole thing. Why? Because they were trying to meet a release date. Oh, damn. <laughs> you think people got fired? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. The whole damn development team, testing team, all were chopped. And that's a very, but, very useless um, mistake. That's a very, you know, that, that there, there's a lot of checks and balances that are in place, right? They were all circumvented, right? Which is not good. Yeah. All right. So let's say we got the QA to certify the code. Then we got UAT to certify the code. Once we get the UAT sign off, now we are ready to do the deployment. In other words, release the code. The code will be deployed to the production environment where our end users will be starting to use the application. What is a BA doing here? He will provide help with the actual sanity checkout that will be happening in the production environment. BA will also continue to handle any new requirements which are being requested by business, and those will still come in the form of a CR, but now these will have to be looked for a future implementation or rollout because the train has come to the last stop. Everybody get out. Our application has gone live. Understood? Right. Any changes now you want have to be planned for a new version and a new release cycle. Understood? Understood. And now, since the application is live, we will start the maintenance phase or the production support phase. And production support is also divided into multiple teams. You have the actual production support team, which is called level two support. They work closely with the customer service or help desk, meaning level one support, to start supporting the application in the production environment. 
Then you also have a level three support, which is the actual dev team that developed the code, the application. And they will be fixing any production issues identified and transferred from level two. OK, for example, let's say you're not able to log into your application and you are a. User. Oh, yeah, what bank do you use? Bank of America. Bank of America. So she's a Bo BOFA client, right? So let's say you're trying to log into your mobile app in BOFA and do you use your fingerprint reader? Yes. So let's say your fingerprint reader is not working and it's not letting you log in. What are you going to do? Um, so maybe I'll try to do the um, login, uh, manual login. Okay, that's not working either. Now what? Call the customer service. Call the customer service, right? So you're gonna call the customer service. That is level one support. They're there to support you, correct? Right. So they will try to see, you know, what's going on with your account. Why are you not able to log in? And let's say that they see that somebody tried to log in to your account and entered the wrong password and your account got locked. So you're trying to log in into a locked account, right? Right. So they will validate you, make sure that you are the real person who this account belongs to, right? And then they will unlock your account and then they will tell you, okay, try now. And you'll try now and you'll be able to log in. So problem solved. Clear? Right. So you raised the ticket to level one. Level one was able to address your issue and they resolved the issue and that issue got resolved by production support level one. Clear? Clear. All right. Let's say you deposited a check. Oh, yeah. And you log into your mobile app and you can't see the check you deposited. It's not showing up there. Hello. Okay. What are you going to do? Call customer service. You're going to call customer service. Okay. So, because you call the customer service, level one support picks up your phone call. They validate who you are. And after they validate who you are, they look into the primary database and they see that yes, there is a record for you depositing the check there. They validate the amount with you and they say, yes, we see the actual transaction, but something is going on because of which on your front end screen, you're not seeing it, but we see an actual record of it. Okay, congratulations, OA, the money hasn't disappeared. <laughs> <It's there>. Better. <laughs> okay. Better. Now what they do is, they reach out to production support team. Production support team, the level two support team, they are there, they are monitoring the application, they are monitoring the servers, they are making sure that the, you know, there's no problems happening, the jobs that are supposed to be running on a nightly basis, they're running, everything is fine, okay? So help level one reaches out to level two and says, look, we just got a call from the customer and the customer is saying, that you know uh, they're not able to see the transaction. I logged into the database. I see the transaction there, but it's not showing up on the front end. Something is going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Production support will start to investigate the issue, and they will say the reason it's not showing up is because the UI picks it up from a staging database. You understand? And you guys are looking at the primary database and not the staging. Somehow. What happens is there is a job that updates the staging database on a nightly basis, right? The, and that job failed last night. Okay? okay. And That's because okay. that job failed, the staging database does not have the latest data. It is stale data. It is data for greater than 24 hours. Understood? Yeah. Production support goes ahead and they manually take off that job. And let's say the job was successfully able to run this time. And now the staging is updated. And now when you log in for that client, you can see the transaction. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now production support will tell level one, guys, we had to rerun the job that failed last night. The problem is solved. We will continue to monitor this job to make sure that it doesn't run into a problem. Okay. Over the next couple of days. Please reach out to the customer and let him know that the issue is resolved now. Level one will reach out to OA, will inform OA, can you please log in and have a look now? OA will log in, she'll see the transaction. OA is happy. Okay, everything done. Ticket closed. Understood? Yeah. 
So in this case, level one pushed the ticket to level two, level two resolved the issue, came back to level one, level one back went back to the customer. Customer. Done. Let's say in the same instance, we find out that production support has identified a bug in the code which made this job fail. Okay. Production support manually went in and updated the database, the staging for the today. Okay. But they know that there is a bug in this job that's supposed to run, right? And there is a chance that it may run into the same bug again. You understand? So what they will do is they will manually update the staging. They will tell customer service the problem is resolved, but we will need to make some code changes to the job. Okay. But customer service, reach out to the customer, let them know if the problem is solved. Customer service will reach out to the customer. In the meantime, the ticket will remain open. Okay. That ticket will be assigned to level three support, the actual development team that wrote that job, that developed that job. And L2 will work with L3, and L3 will make the code changes, will release the code changes again through QA, through UAT, and then we'll go to production. Understood? Once it's in production, Production support will verify that the code changes that they have said are now visible in the production environment, and then they will close that ticket. So in this third instance, the ticket went all the way to level three support. Everybody clear with the different levels of support? Yes. Any questions? What is a BA doing? Now, typically, you got to be a senior BA to do this one. <laughs> okay. You are liaisoning between the level one support and level two support that are meeting the customers and your development team, the level three team for any production issues. And you're making sure those production issues are being addressed. They're part of the upcoming releases to QA, to UAT, and everything is being handled accordingly. So a senior BA would be sitting in the production support calls also, along with, you know, your project manager. Project managers are also in the production support calls, right? Making sure that, you know, there's no major issues or anything like that that needs immediate attention. Everybody clear? Yes. Maintenance cycle remains on as long as the application is up and running. So as if you bought a car, how long do you need to maintain it? As long as you own it, <laughs> right? It's got to go for the oil changes, got to go for the tires, it's got to go for the viper blades, it's got to go for the transmission fluid changes, right? When do you stop maintaining that car? When you sell it. When you, when <laughs> you, you get rid of it. it. Or you, when you get rid of it, <laughs> okay? So as long as that application is up, maintenance will continue. Everybody clear? Mm -hmm. This is sequential software development, aka traditional waterfall method. Any questions? These are your fundamentals of software development. Everybody clear? Yes, sir. All right, let's take a break. Congratulations, you're finished one of the two deep dives <laughs> all right so we will now go back to our slides after we take uh, let's say let's get back by 11 10 how's 11 10 18 minute break everybody good yes sir okay all right stretch them legs drink them coffee <laughs> oh yeah who was supposed oh. to get you the coffee <laughs> yes please the coffee and the pizza and the pizza. Oh, yeah, he's not yes. forgotten the lunch yet. <laughs> I won't forget. I don't forget free stuff. Exactly. <laughs> Ayed, you were saying something? No. All right. Okay. Let's be back by 11 uh, 10. All right. All right. No problem. Thank you. Bye -bye.
Hello, are we on break or something?
It looks like something. <laughs> hey, what's up? Something looks like someone is snoring. A nice nap, yeah. <laughs> it's too funny. We back? No, no, I don't know yet. Okay. Some of the some of the best naps I had were in college during classes. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, which uh, he's probably on his third or fourth dream right now. Yeah, he's in REM sleep. Like cloud nine. <laughs> I hope uh, he makes it for the class once it's all breaking. Yeah. Some of us that don't get sleep that easy, I just wonder how people like get sleep that easy and you be in a class oh, and you can. I, I agree with you. I'm so. I, I'm so jealous, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't. I, I, I literally up until the last two weeks, I wasn't able to sleep. I have to. I normally have to use a sleep aid to sleep. Like it's that bad. And even with the sleep aid, melatonin, I use ten grams, and I still wake up in at a normal time to walk. You know, it's it's really bad. So when I see people like mm -hmm. like I just doze off like that, I'm like, wow, these people are so lucky. <laughs> hmm. oh, wow, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Where is Ali? Let him just mute everyone. What happened? Oh, someone is in cloud cloud nine. Right someone now. is in cloud nine. Yes. Yeah, it's snoring loud. <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> they had a wonderful break. <laughs> okay, everybody put yourselves on mute. Let's see who doesn't know on mute. <clears throat> All right. That's Muhammad. Muhammad! Are you doing some? We scream out loud. <laughs> To wake him up. Muhammad has to be. We you have to be next to that guy. Like wake him up, hit him before he gets because that sleep he is deep. He's deep. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. I, I muted him. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get back. So. So we did STLC. We did traditional waterfall. Actually, we also kind of covered V model. So V model is nothing but a redefined version of traditional waterfall. So when I I teach you guys uh, traditional waterfall, I teach you traditional waterfall from breast practices, right? So basically, what they've done is they've taken the V and they've incorporated V with traditional, and it's a merger of the two. So. V model is nothing but a redefined version of the waterfall model. It describes each phase and its associated testing cycle. There are four levels of testing involved. Testing levels can be reorganized and combined based on the project. So for example, in this in the example you see here, you have requirements analysis being done. This is your BRD, your business requirements document putting together, right? Then they have the high level design. Here, high level design is your functional specifications or the functional requirements. Then you have your detailed design, right? Which is your TDD, correct? 
So you have your BRD, your FRD, and your TDD, correct? And once you have all three done, that's when we go into coding and development. Everybody correct? Yes. Yes? Yes. Right. Once we come out of coding, we talked about this. The very first type of testing is being done by the developers, and it is unit testing. testing. What's another name for unit testing? Dev test. Oh, sorry. White box. Um, white box. So, yes, yeah, sorry. White box. White and black right? box. So, what are they trying to do? They are trying to validate the design that they had put together, right? So, unit testing is trying to validate the back end design, right? Once right. the unit testing is done, we will integrate the code and start integration testing, right? Which is our DIT, correct? Dev integrated testing. What are we validating? Now we are validating the functional requirements or the functionality of the application, correct? Correct. And once we have done that, that's when the official round of operational testing will begin, right? And we said the operational testing is divided into two cycles. What are the two cycles? QA and UAT, quality QA assurance and, and user acceptance testing. Correct. Quality assurance and user acceptance testing. Those are both the operational. So that's how they come up with the four levels of testing. Clear? Yes. And once we successfully do that, we deploy the code and the ongoing support begins, the maintenance cycle. Clear? Yes. So the way we taught you and we deep dived into traditional, we take both concepts. We take the four levels of testing incorporated into a traditional model and we make sure that our waterfall has both things incorporated in it. Got it? Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Now we will talk about the very first of the iterative cycles. And we said that there is two approaches to software delivery. One is a big bang where the entire set of functionality F1 through F10 will be delivered in one rollout. Correct? The other delivery approach is iterative, meaning we will not deliver F1 through 10 in one rollout, but we will actually piecemeal it. You got it? So Spiral is an iterative model. It combines the features of prototyping model and waterfall model. It is being used for large, expensive, and complicated projects. Okay. The system requirements are defined in as much detail as possible and a preliminary design is created from the initial set of requirements. A first prototype of the new system is constructed from the preliminary design. This is typically a scaled down version and represents an approximation of the characteristics of the final product. All the pre-sending steps are iterated meaning repeated until the customer is satisfied that the redefined prototype represents the final product desired. Okay, so let's have a look at this diagram here. Okay, and you can see in the diagram, number one, we will start off by determining what are the objectives of the project. Two, we'll identify and resolve any kind of risks. Three, we will develop and we will test and or we will plan for our next iteration. So going around the block one time is one iteration, which results in prototype number one. Then we iterate and build on top of prototype number one, and we go around the block one more time, and the output is prototype number two. And then we repeated it. So every prototype is released to the business stakeholders. Until and unless we wind up having in the third round, we repeat ourselves and we wind up getting a operational prototype. The one that has enough functionalities built on top of it so that we can code, integrate, test, and implement each cycle and release that operational prototype. You got it? The beauty about this is that once business gets each prototype, 
they can actually comment on what they have received. So say if I delivered function one, two and three as part of prototype one, right? Business has the opportunity now to look at one, two and three and they can recommend any kind of changes on one, two and three, agreed? And then we can not only build four, five and six, but we can also accommodate any change requests on one, two and three, agreed? So when prototype two comes out, they have a better enhanced version of F1 through F3 plus four, five, six on top of it. You got it? Everybody following what I'm saying? Now can you, can you now, please repeat it one more time? I didn't, I didn't understand. Okay, so when I released the first prototype, it had function one, two, and three, got it? Yes. Business got one, two, three. They can now look at one, two, three, and they can even give us feedback on one, two, and three, right? Meaning nice. if they have any changes that they would like to make to one, two, and three, they can give us those changes. You understand? Yeah. So when I am working on prototype number two, not only am I building four, five, and six, but I'm also taking in changes on one, two, and three. Oh, three. Agreed? Okay, okay, yes, yes, we got it. So the second prototype has a better version of one, two, and three, right? Right. Plus four, five, and six is added on top of that. Mm -hmm. Agreed? Yes. Then this time business again has the chance to review one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Right. And give us any kind of feedback on one through six. Mm -hmm. Plus we will work on seven, eight, nine, and 10. You got it? Right. Yeah. Since this is going out to business earlier and they are getting an opportunity to look at the product much earlier. Remember, if I would have waited to build all 10, it might have taken me a year, right? Yes. But since my scope has been reduced to just one, two, and three, I can deliver this earlier, right? Yeah, but there, there can still be more changes to one, two, and three. Of course. Yeah. But look, the end product that goes out has a much better version of one, two, three, four, five, six than giving them the version one of these functions at the end of the year. Agreed? Yes, agreed. You understand? Yes, yes, I understand. So yes, I that is why if this does not know exactly what they want mm -hmm. iterative models are better yes i agree you understand but yes. if business knows exactly what they want and they know they, they, it's a mature business then yes traditional is a better way because it has more checks and balances now remember every time they keep giving us enhancements and changes that does increase the workload. You understand? But the end result is the product is better and more user friendly compared to if you would have delivered it in a traditional manner. You understand? Yes. Yeah. Everybody clear? Yes. 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 Something like agile, which is the most aggressive, <laughs> they sometimes say that we fail fast because we fix fast. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, uh, that's how you want to go and do it, sure. Right? Fail fast, learn fast. That's how iterative models go. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is spiral. All right. Now we go from spiral to RAD. RAD stands for Rapid Application Development. Rapid application development is basically designed to give much faster development than achieved with traditional life cycles. This is typically used for small projects, 60 to 90 days. I have used it on very, very big ones also. Basically, what they do is they take the project and they demodulize the project to fasten the process. And they take each module as an individual project itself. The phases will include modeling, data modeling, business modeling, process modeling, development, and testing. Okay. So let's talk about this. I like to use the example of building a car here. 
So can somebody please give me six major components of a car? Engine, transmission. Engine, transmission. Tires. Tires. Tires is not a major component. That is one piece. <laughs> Let's call that suspension system, right? Suspension. Yes, correct. The suspension system has the brakes, the, 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 the shocks, the struts, the, the rods, the whole nine yards, right? Including the tires. The actual body. Chassis. Good. So we got chassis, suspension, engine, <clears throat> transmission. Let's call the last two pieces the interior and the exterior. Okay? Okay. Make sense? Yes. yes. For this example, we'll go with the assumption that the complexity on each of these components is, ex is equal. Okay? So they're equally complex. All right? And... By the way, you're supposed to be writing all of this thing, all this information that's being given to you because it's going to, it's, you're going to, I'm going to be asking you questions on it. And with a team of five members, a team of five members, if I was to develop this product in a traditional manner, meaning work on one piece, work on another piece, work on another piece, it would take me with one five member team three months to develop each component of my vehicle. So how long will development take for all six components? Uh, can you repeat? Yeah. So I said it will take me with a team of five members. Three months to develop each component of my car. So how long will it take me to develop all the components of my car? 18, Eight, 18 months. 18 months. How did you come mm -hmm. up with that number? Because you had six Eight components. Six. six components, three months, <laughs> each, six times three, 18 months. Everybody on the same page. Yes. Seth? I'm only hearing yes from two people. Yes, yes. Exactly. Two people yes. in the class? I know one person is sleeping, but what about the rest of you? Uh, yeah, I, I, I missed, but I will listen to the recording. <clears throat> I'm going to listen to the recording. I was sleeping. Ah, sugar. Okay, good. Good oil. <laughs> All right. Well, boys and girls, we don't have 18 months to build this car. We need to build it faster. Business wants this to be delivered faster. So what will we do? We will try to apply a RAD method of delivery. What does RAD do? Rad will do the initial planning just like we just did, and we identified how many components of the vehicle? Six. Six. Six components. And as part of our initial analysis, we said if we were to build this in a traditional one team manner, it would take 18 months. Uh -uh, not going to work. Right? Five team members. So, right? Huh? Five team members. Five team members, correct. So what we said was we can't do that. So Let's try and see how many individual teams we can set up. And according to this model right here, we were able to put together how many teams? Three teams. Three teams. All right. And what we said is that we will try to break our vehicle into modules and handle these modules between the teams. Now, since we have said that the complexity of each module is the same, I said that, right? Being that said, how many modules will you give to each team? Two. One module? Two. 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 You're going to give two, right? How many modules do you have to build? Six. Or six. Six. Oh, six divided in three teams is? Oh, yeah, three. Two modules each team. Two modules each. Yeah. Agreed? Yes. All right. What do you want to assign to team one? Design the engine and transmission. I just designed. Oh, okay. Design. I just designed. If they're just going to design, who the hell is going to build? Who the hell is going to implement? Who's going to test? Yeah, design, build, implement, and test. And then Let's deliver. Let's the word develop. Develop, okay. Right? We're going to handle the engine. And what did you say? Transmission. Engine and transmission. Why engine and transmission are you giving to team one? What is the logic behind that? 
Because <clears throat> they're actually directly related to each other. They actually integrate with each other. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, that's a better they way. logically go together. Okay. okay. <laughs> no okay. issues there. All right. So team one got what? Engine and? Engine transmission. All right. What do you want to give to team two? Suspension and chassis. Uh -huh. Suspension and chassis. Okay, I agree with you. Again, two components that will integrate with each other. All right, that leaves team number three with interior, interior exterior. Clear and exterior. Okay, great. All right. All three of these teams, we would want them to start at the same time. Same time, yeah. Right? So in order to start at the same time. How many business analysts do we see here? Three. Three business analysts. Why not one? Yeah, just one. One can handle all three of the teams. Acha, who said one can handle all three? I said that. There's nobody named I in this class. Mayank, Mayank. <laughs> okay, Mayank. Mayank, if you're going to be handling all three teams, mm -hmm. how, which team do you want to start first? And which team do you want to start second? And which team do you want to start third? Because you're not going to gather the requirements for all three at the same time, right? And if you are, how much time do you want to wait? I want the engineering transmission team to start first. And then why? Then are you starting parallel development? If you're going to push this forward? Because they are not related to suspension and chesses. So, so let me ask you something. If you're going to start the first team, let's say we are in January, right? Right. Start of the year. Which team will start in January? Team one, engine and transmission. And when will team two begin? Right after I gather all the requirements for them. Which is how long? <laughs> <laughs> and when will team three start? Why in God's name would you make yourself a bottleneck, man? Can we do it simultaneously? And out of the six components, which component are you going to first gather the requirements on? And which is going to be the second component? Which will be the third component? Which will be the fourth component? Which will be the fifth component? Which will be the sixth component, Mayak? Thank God you're not a project manager. <clears throat> The whole purpose of dividing it into three teams, you're torpedoing it. Do you understand? Yes. When you, when you say torpedo, you mean that, like that's an acronym? Yes, it is an acronym of a ship getting hit with a torpedo and then sinking. <laughs> <laughs> And don't think Mayank is in the submarine torpedoing it. He's on the ship sinking. Oh, <laughs> Oye is the one on the telescope sinking. <laughs> Mayank. <laughs> For telling him that a one BA can do it. No, man. You want to assign a BA to each team so they are totally independent. There is no dependency. You understand? Yeah. The approach if there were three BAs, BA number one will be the gathering the requirements for what? Engine. Engine transmission. Engine and transmission. That is his scope. That is his deliverable. Agreed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And BA number two will gather the requirements for what? Suspension and chases. Correct. And BA three is left with gathering the requirements for the? Interior and exterior. The design on team one will be designing what? Engine and transmission. Team two will design? Suspension and chassis. Team three will design? Exterior and interior. And in the same way, here implementation means development. Team one is developing the? Engine and transmission. And team two is developing the? Suspension and chassis. And team three is developing the? Interior and exterior. Interior and exterior. When is team one going to deliver their products? Their components. Three months. Three months. Really? How long does it take for the team to build the engine? I don't know. 
What do you mean you don't know? You know. I know. I already told you that answer. How long does it take the team to build the engine? Sorry, I might have missed that. Three months, man. That's what I said. Initially, yeah. initially three months. Yes, oh, it was. Okay. What do you mean initially? What What do you mean by initially? Well, still, the idea. Still, the... still say five members, right? Yeah. Did I change the number of members on this team? No. No. So still three months. How long to build the transmission? Three months. Three months for each component. So how long will it take the team one to build their components? Six months. Let me know. No, I thought I thought they would be at the same they would work at the same time. But that was how can they work on two components at the same time? Yeah, yeah. So that was my mistake. Right? Yeah. So team one is starting which month? Uh, excuse me, I have a question. Does this uh, team of five members including the BA as well? Yes. Okay. Okay. Team of five members is BA. Even traditionally, when we were doing one team, don't you think there was a BA in that team? Yes, yes, there was. If there wasn't, you shouldn't be attending this class. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? You right, want right. you to have a job, no? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's a very important job, right? Who the hell is going to document all the requirements for all these yes, things? Yes. Right? Yes. So, team one starts which month? January. January. January, yeah. And when am I getting my engine and transmission? Uh, after April. six months in June. After at the end of June. End of June, right? Beginning July. Okay. Team two started when? January. January also. And when am I getting their components? April. Uh huh. No, also in June end. How? Also in June end, yeah. Also in June. What is team two components? Two components. Suspension. Two components. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Six months. What is team two building? You didn't answer my question. Suspension and chassis. Listening skills. Listening skills. Focus. Suspension yeah. and chassis. Sure. And when is they delivering it? They'll deliver it. In? Six months in total. Six months, right? End of June. June, yes. Yeah. Team three, what are they building? Interior exterior. Same. When same are they time. starting? J January. And when are they delivering? June. 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 End of June. Yeah. End, of, end of June, yes. So when do I get all components of my vehicle now? In how much end time? End of June, in six months. In six months. Compared component. One traditional team it was? 18 months. 18 months. So, uh, Ali, I have a quick question. Why it's called rapid? Yeah, yeah, one third. One third time. Yes, somebody so, had a question? Yes, I had a question, Ali. So, considering the fact that everybody in every industry is concerned about timelines, mm -hmm. uh, in this case, obviously, the traditional method was take, taking 18 months, and then we just figured out through the RAD it's taking, you know, just six months. Mm -hmm. So, why, why even bother with the traditional matter in any project? Then, I mean, isn't it better to always do the RAD? Yeah, so so according to Ovas, <laughs> according to Ovas, Ovas is looking to deliver a baby with nine mothers in one month, huh? Well, no, not really. Why not? Wouldn't that be faster and better? Okay, only when you can. <laughs> only when you can, I guess, right? Yes, not everything can be done parallelly, brother. Okay, so that answers my questions. Yes, so, <laughs> I mean, but yes. how? I mean, we're not. We can't know that nothing. You know, everything is not parallel. And it's that. part of your planning and initial analysis, right? What can be delivered? What has a dependency on another thing? So you understand? Sorry to cut off. So let's say you, you do the uh, you do a rapid application development, and mm. it gets rejected they'll specify what is getting rejected well let's say you tried to do it this way but it 
you I guess oh you wouldn't do it right and in, in research for this you would see that it wouldn't no you could you could this can be implemented as long as you can individually work on a component and then integrate it later on sure you could Got it. right it's just a question of what can be worked on individually versus not now here comes so when you jump to that question that was an excellent question to us so let me ask you something since, since you've been doing some analysis already that's good to ask which model is cheaper using one traditional team or using this rad with three teams Which cost effect cost effective wise uh, the traditional meth method would be cheaper traditional would be cheaper Ovas is putting his money on traditional who wants to who's on Ovas' side i would i would take his side as well because uh -huh. I, I i see that there's a potential of like increase potential flaws because they're, they're no, so... no, no. I am saying both projects were delivered in a successful method. Oh, okay, okay. Okay? Yeah. Which is cheaper? If everything went well on both sides, both projects, everything went well. I believe the maybe the Rapid application. Rapid is cheaper. Okay. So Sayyid is putting money on Rapid. Oa says traditional. Anybody else wants to... Give their opinion. <clears throat> no? All right. In that case, I'm going to start asking. And now, since you did not tell me, you better back your answer with some explanation. Arun, which one and why? Arun, you're on mute. Is Anand sleeping also? Anand going once. Anand going twice. Sold. Anand. So microphone yeah. is not working. Okay, so <laughs> write in the answer which one you think and why. Okay, chat it to me. Manoj, same question. Sorry, Ali. Um, I have to um up out. I need to attend to something very urgent. No problem. Uh, yes, sir. Right. Thank you. I'm sorry. No problem. We're going to stop after this model anyways, so you're not going to miss much. Watch the video afterwards. Manoj? Yes, sir. Which one and why? Can I repeat the question one more time? So you weren't paying attention. Excellent. All right. Go back on mute, man. All right. Who's next? Who's next? Rehman? Rehman, you're on mute. I'm okay. listening. I'm listening, but sorry, I'm on highway right now. You're on highway? Yeah, yeah I'm driving in general. It's yeah. killing me, man. All right, go back on mute. Keep your eye on the road. Salman? Yeah. Yeah? What do you mean, yeah? I need an answer from you. <laughs> yeah? Do you remember what the question is? Were you paying attention? Yeah, yeah I remember what the question is. But I'm okay, what's the question? Let's start with that. Um, you're asking me which side should I uh, go with? Because <laughs> which side should I go? With? Traditional or <laughs> almost, almost, or the it. rapid one? Almost. There. Which one would be more cost effective? That was the question. Right. Correct. Yeah. I'm not sure so, which one would be more like costly. You got a 50 50 chance, man. Any, any, any more. Rapid, I guess. Rapid, okay. <laughs> okay. You guys Come killing on, me. Guys. Come on, guys. I need somebody on my team. <laughs> yeah, we need some team members. Oh, on an island. <laughs> <laughs> Ram Rakash. Ram Raksha. I yes, definitely. Sir. I definitely think. Oh, sorry, I didn't know you were asking someone. Go ahead. Hey, that's fine. You can you can give your inputs if you want. So I'm actually give her input too. Go ahead, uh, Shamraksha. Mm, I think traditional is cheaper. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go, Bye, boy. Man. There's your backing. <laughs> You're very smart. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. It's very 
easy to figure this out, right? <laughs> OWASP for your traditional. Yeah. How many members are on your team, brother? <clears throat> There's five members. Five members. But, Let's keep but, 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 but yeah. only one BA, though. So what? Doesn't matter. Let's keep the math simple. Let's say you're paying everybody one dollar. Okay. That's why OA already jumped off. If she doesn't want to work for a dollar. Hmm. Right? So if you're paying everybody a dollar, your salary for a month is thirty dollars. Are you guessing thirty dollars? How many members are on your team? Oh, for everyone. Oh, okay, okay. How many members on your team? Five, five members. Five, five members. Each. Yes. One dollar each. So one month cost you? Five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. How many months did it take this team to develop the car? 18 months. Or traditional. So how much did that cost you, buddy? 18. 90. Oh, sorry. Uh, five multiplied. 90. Ah, 90 dollars. You got your cost yes, estimate? Sir. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. All right. Who are my right people? Uh, me. Who's me? Sorry. Nobody named me. Said. <laughs> Said. Okay. All right. You have the E, but not the M. <laughs> <laughs> I chose. I chose a rad model because I I believe its potential to be cheaper, but it also has a higher risk of being more more costly. Well, we, we're not even talking about the risk. Risk oh. will remain on both sides, but you are right. There is more risk on RAD and we'll talk about that. But straight numbers to numbers, apples to apples comparison. How many members are on your project? Five. No. Oh, in the RAD model. Three. Sorry, so. Five yeah. members on one team. How many teams did you stand up? Two teams. Huh? Teams. Oh, three teams. Oh, there are three teams, Sayyid. Oh, I apologize. I think you meant. Three teams, right? One right. was engine transmission, one was interior exterior, one was chassis and suspension. Three no, no, teams. No, no. That's right? what I meant. No, no, no. I meant, yeah, I meant um, two components. So one team, two components. Correct. So it's three teams that you are on the salary, right? Yes. Yeah. How many members on each team? Three teams. Three members. How three how can three members, two, two, three two, members two. deliver something Sorry. that it five members take for three months? Still five members on each team, yeah? Yes. That's how the damn delivery is still three months. Yes, and there's fifteen uh total. Fifteen total. Fifteen total. Yes. You got it? How much are you paying each member? One dollar. One dollar. So your monthly burn is? 15. 15. 15. How many months did your team take to build this in a successful delivery? Three months. Huh? Can I say three months? No, no, it was uh, six months. Six months. Six, six. months. Sorry. Six forgot about months. That. Yes. But then, but then the cost is the same. It's 90 for both. Voila. That is correct. The cost is the same. Why is the cost the same? Did you change the scope of the project? No. Are you building a Hyundai and a Ferrari? No, scope is the same. We're still building that one car. Still the same car, right? So if the scope is the same, the cost to build it should be the? Same. 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 How did that happen? That happened because the triangle that is used has time, resources, and the byproduct of the time and the resources is the money. That's the triangle, right? So draw a triangle, write time, resources, money on each side. And what goes inside the triangle is the scope. If you are not changing the scope, does the area of the triangle change? No. No, stays the same. Stays the same. What you're effectively doing is you are taking the length of the time. What was the length of the time for traditional? What number? 18 months. 18. And you've converted it 18 into a? <clears throat> Six months. Six. Six. Six months. Which is a factor of what? 
Dividend of three. Factor of three. You've reduced it three times, correct? Yeah, can I ask you a question? One second, one second. Let me finish my analysis, then you ask. On the other side, what did you do with your resources factor? You went from a five man team to a 15 man, 15 man team. 15 man team. So you increase that by a factor of three. Three. So what do you think the cost will be? Constant, right? Constant, yeah. Understood. Don't so this even puts more question into OWAS's statement there. Why can't we do this more often if that is the case? Exactly, right. Yeah. Right? It goes back to the question of number one. Can you do parallel development? Question number one. The downside of this is integration. The higher risk in RAD is integration. That's one. The other problem is management. Okay, but I think somebody was asking a question before I go and talk more on it. Who had the question? Yes, sir. So like uh, in the development team, like we have assigned three different BRs uh, where they are accounted for, like we don't have con uh, accommodate for the cost. The BA is part of the five member team. Uh, BA are including or? They like, are included. A, uh, but in traditional. He's there yeah. too. Okay. So you have yeah, it's in both places. I didn't take BA out. If you look at it, how many BAs did we have in traditional? One. One. How many BAs we have here? We have for each BA for each team. Three. Say three. Three each, yes. On that team, if one was a BA, what were the other four? Oh, they are also BAs. Abhay, kya, the whole damn project team is made up of BAs. Development okay. team. They are the tech folks, right? Front end developer, back end developer, developers, right? Yes, correct. So, how many developers on that team? Four developers. Four, Four developers. How many developers on this model? Twelve. In a red pill. Twelve. Yeah, twelve. It's three times. Okay. So, how many members are in the right project? 15 members. 15, and how many are in the traditional? Five. And five. Okay. That's why it took you 18 months to build it because you only had a five member team. They couldn't divide the work amongst themselves. Here you divided it, you got it? Okay, yeah, I was just uh, confused. Like uh, we are adding more BS, uh, yes. 15 members. We're adding more developers too. How else do you okay. think you're going to get the job done in six months instead of 18? Okay, but uh, the cost effective is uh, both the same. Yes. Well, because you are only hiring them for six months. You understand? Yes, On correct. On the other yes. side, you hired them for 18, oh, 18 months. months. You pay them for 18 months. Yes, correct. Yes. Okay, I now understand. Yeah, I was just but what's the difference the between paying three BAs for six months versus paying one BA for eighteen months? It's the same cost. Got it now. So that means, as an individual, as a BA, I think I prefer the traditional method. I get a longer contract. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. Absolutely. But right. you can also finish by doing a developer method and a rapid method. And finish it yeah, in yeah. six months. You can definitely do right. And then, and then the know. next project. So now, what's the problem here? Think of this as being a kitchen. In a traditional one team kitchen, how many chefs were running around in the kitchen? I was just going to say that because sometimes too many cooks can spoil the broth. It is an old Exactly. Thing. So if I have five guys running in one kitchen, right? I only have to, as a PM, I have to only manage five people, right? In this rad kitchen, how many people are running around? 15. 15. 15. And yes, they are working on their own dishes. But don't you think they're going to run into each other? No, it's possible, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Right? The other thing, 
Remind me again, what was team one building? Engine and transmission. Of a smart car. What is team two building? Suspension and chassis. Of an F-150 pickup truck. What is team three building? Interior, exterior. Of a Toyota Corolla. Go ahead and integrate these parts. No, not possible. No. You can't. Oh, yes, you can. Give me a welding torch. I'll integrate the damn thing. It just won't do what it's supposed to do. Right? Right. But in a traditional, it's the same five members that are doing everything. So what is the chance that they're going to build the engine for this car and build the body for that car and build the body for this? Right? So what are the chances that the risk to integration is higher on which model? The risk is higher in RAD. In RAD. Management is higher on what? Management is higher on RAD. 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 Yeah. RAD. More people, more people to manage, more attitudes, more headache. Yes, it's for a shorter period of time, but the risk is higher. Imagine these were three delivery teams, right? By the way, which team is on a critical path? Which is the most critical team between team one, two, and three? Uh, one. Nope. The uh, team, <clears throat> team three, I would think. No. Nope. You mentioned both the wrong teams. Yes. Team what does three. everything get bolted onto? Suspension and chassis. Chassis. If the chassis is delayed, oh, what are you going to sit on the engine go vroom vroom? Hmm. No, you delayed. Right. So which is the most critical team? Team? Two. Two. Then team two will integrate with which team first? Team three. No. Team one, team one. Oh, team one. one. You're going to yeah. drop the engine and the transmission in before you drop the interior and the exterior, right? Yes, correct. Yes. So if there is any slack in delivery delay, which team is that? Team? Team one. Three. One and two will start integrating on schedule, right? Yes. Yeah. So at the end of six months, which integration teams will happen first? Team one and two. One and two, right? Yeah. While you're integrating one and two, team three can take like a month. Let's say it takes one month to integrate. Or six weeks to integrate one with three, one with two. Team three can deliver it six weeks late if it had to be. Right? I got slack there. You understand? Yes, good. Yeah. But who cannot be delayed? Definitely not team number two. And definitely not team number one. I need to make sure one and two are delivering on time so that the integration begins on time. You understand? Okay. Right? Yeah. Just like our house, if we were getting all the components built by different teams, what is the very first team that I got to make sure delivers on time? The foundation right on our house if the roofing guy is there on time but the foundation is not done what is the roofer going to do nothing he's gonna wait will the framing begin in the basement when the foundation is not put in no no can you build the whole house in a red model? No. No, <laughs> you cannot. Because those damn things sit on top of each other. You understand? Mm -hmm. I can't build the roof on the side. I can't do the plumbing and the wiring at the same time. Do you understand, OS? That's because, a great yeah. example. Because, yeah. because, because of what you said earlier, because in building a house, there is no parallel integration. That's why a right. ride cannot be done. Right. Now, there are certain things that can have parallel, right? So once the framing is up, I can have the windows 
guy come in and start installing the windows and everything. The exterior walls getting put up the things. So there are things that can overlap, but certain things cannot overlap, right? You can't do the wiring of the house till the frame is up. Yes, yes, we cannot, we cannot. Right? You can't do the roofing till the frame is up. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Right, right. You can't do the plumbing until unless the main lines are coming to the house, right? Right. You can wire the whole house and not have to worry about the main uh, electric company bringing the power into the house, right? They can be integrated later. Agreed? So as yes. a project manager, one of our jobs is to identify all the different modules of the project and also try to identify which can happen in parallel, which cannot happen in parallel, right? That's how we bring the timelines in by doing parallel development. On things that can happen parallelly, I'll bring him in. I can have the electrician and the plumbing guy doing work at the same time in the house, right? Right. right. But I can't have the framer and the roofer at the same time. Right. And it all starts with the foundation. Till the foundation is not put in, and not only just put in, fully tested, <laughs> right? I don't want to move forward, right? Right. All right, so as you can see, there are advantages in RAD, leads to customer satisfactions as they are involved in all stages. Feedback from the users are available before the final product is all put together, and less time in the SDLC. Disadvantages, the model makes use of effective tools to fasten the process, which requires highly skilled professional. In other words, you know these three teams, right? If these three teams, let's compare them to soccer teams. Everybody like World Cup soccer? Yes, correct, yes. All right, so yes. which is the most important team here? Team number two, right? Two, correct, yes. So which country do you want to assign team number two in the World Cup? a very, very solid team that always will make it, say, to the Sweet 16. Which team would that be? Brazil. 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 Yeah. So that's a very solid, you know, they, your chances of them delivering delayed is very rare, right? So good, good team. What is team number one? Uh, France. France, great, you know. Would I make team number three, India or Pakistan? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> right? Same yeah. way, I could go and I could tell you, let's make team number one like a country level team, right? FIFA level team. Team number two could be a college level team. And team number three could be a high school team. Would you ever set up a team like that? No, right? The best example would be like the Premier League or the IPL, where you have superstars anchoring each team, right? So you need to make sure that each one of these teams are balanced with skilled professionals, right? Don't make one heavy and the one that like all college grads, <laughs> right? You're asking for trouble. <laughs> Understood? That is also a risk that you have to mitigate. Everybody clear? By the way, this delivery can happen in a iterative approach or a traditional approach, meaning three teams doing traditional delivery versus three teams doing it in a iterative delivery. Okay? Guys, I know I told you guys that uh, I'm going to send you the notes. Are you okay if I send you the notes next week and not this week? Because I did not share my email with everyone. And um, some folks have already dropped from the class. We went a little over. What do you think? Uh, sure. Yeah, sure. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bye, Bye, uh, I wanted to try to get you the notes. Um, we definitely uh, will be looking at the notes. The first homework assignment is going to be coming to you. This is this is all that you're going to get in the homework assignment. Actually, you know what? I'm going to send it to you. Yeah, Guys, I was going to say, can you please send it? I'll send it to you. Because I, yeah, I don't want to wait another week. I'm sorry. This That's weekend, fine. That's I have fine. time this All week right. to study. No issues. So this is what I want you guys to do. 
So I am sharing my email address with you guys. I think most of you guys are here anyways, so it's not that I'm going to miss a lot of people. One second. So where is chat? Right here. So this is my email address, batrainerali at gmail.com. Okay? Did I spell that right? B A. Okay, I spelled trainer wrong. Double N. No, train, trainer. Yeah, trainer. Ali no, one, it should be one N, right? One N. Right, I spelled it wrong. So it should be B A trainer Ali at gmail.com. Okay? Um, I was also going to say if, should, you know, should I share my email address if anybody wanted? No, to... you should not share because you haven't gotten the full instructions yet. Okay, okay. So what I need you to do is I need you to send me an email right now and the subject line, subject line should read as such. You guys are your, uh, you guys started in Feb. So your Feb 2022 weekend batch. All right, that's the subject line right there. Feb 2022 weekend batch. And in the body of the email, you're going to simply say, sir, please share the slides and the homework assignments. Okay? Yes. All right. So send this to me right now, and I'll tell you what your homework assignment is. So you're, you don't have any assignments assigned to you because your first assignment is going to be product backlog, which will come after we have completed Agile. OK, what you will need to do over the week is look at these YouTube videos. OK, especially the first one. The first one is a pretty big video. It's about two hours and 40 minutes. It's anything and everything about agile. Same thing I will be teaching you. This is also a video, but it also teaches you about Jira tool. The most common tool that is used for agile development and agile management. You got it? So spend the time looking at that video so you guys can be ready for when we go over Agile. Agile is too, uh, we're going to be talking about RUP next, which is Rational Unified Process, and then it's Agile. And Agile will have the deep dive on it, right? So that's what I need you guys to do for this weekend. Look at these videos, all right, especially the first one. Everybody clear with what is the assignment for this week? Yes. 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 Watch the now, watch the YouTube video. Watch the YouTube video, especially the first one. So now let me load the inbox. And if you see your name, whenever it loads, mm -hmm. come on. I already sent you the email. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, okay, here we go. It's loading I'm now. Sorry, this is Roman. Sorry, I'm driving right now. I cannot send you email right now. All right. As long as you remember to send it, uh -huh. you'll get it. Because I respond back directly against the emails. Okay, so Maya, I got you. Oves, I got you. Go, feel free to drop. Okay. Okay. Once you guys see your names come here, you can do that. Rehman, when you when you get a chance, you can send it to me. I'll reply back to you. I'll probably send the slides and everything tomorrow. So I'll wait like one day to get everybody's response back. Okay. Okay. It's at gmail.com, right? Ba at gmail.com. That is correct. Okay, got it. All right. So far, I've just got two. Where's the rest of you? My, I just uh, sent mine. You should, you should have gotten it already. Alman? It's in. The, yeah, it's it's, it's right there in the chat. Just look in the chat. It's right there. Oh no no! I'm not gonna be sending it to you in the chat. That no, was no, not. No. Sorry, requested. that wasn't for you, sir. Uh, um, Syed Mohammed wrote if he could repeat. The oh, email. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. We got it. Let me Where's know. Where's my Feb 2021, Salman? Sorry, I forgot. Gotcha. If you got the one from Syed, let me know. I am just waiting. All right, so I got Ashraf. Yes. I got Samraksha. All right. And I got Manoj. Samraksha, where is my subject? You guys need to learn how to follow directions. Oh, I just sent it. All right. 
there. Would you mind uh, repeating the subject line again? So, so I cannot take notes right now. I'm sorry. That's fine. The subject line is you, you, you're your batch. You're a Feb 2022 weekend batch. Feb 22 weekend batch. That's yeah. it. And okay. in Thank the you. body, you will say, sir, please share the slides and the homework assignments. Okay. Yeah. Jose, I got you. Manoj, I got you. Drop, drop. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye guys. Okay. Uh thank you so much. I'll see you next thank week. You, I'll hear from you next week. Inshallah. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Hey guys. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Who else is still here? Who did not send one? Salman, I got yours, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you did. Okay. Rahman, I don't see you. Anand, I know you have problems with your mic. Don't know if you're following. You're not following. And uh, earlier, I was just when I was recommending to share the the email here on the chat. I just meant for the other. Uh -huh, I got you. I yeah. Got okay. Okay. You. I got cool, cool. Okay. I got you. I got you. Yeah. By the time you said it, that's when the message had come. I didn't have paid on it, but when I read the message, I was like, okay, he's talking to he's talking to what's his name? Um, who was the name? Mohammed, I think. Muhammad, yeah. yeah. Um, but also going forward, if uh, oh. we ever wanted to message each other, would that be possible? Yeah, we can chat with each other. No, I uh, mean like I away from the WebEx. That's why away I, from the WebEx. Yeah, yeah it's gotta that's why I was. Yeah, that's why I was saying if I could share my actual email address on the chat so Hello? that they could take it. Yeah. Yes, Muhammad. Yeah, uh, I just sent you the e my email. Muhammad, do you know you were sleeping? Huh? You were sleeping. You didn't have yourself on mute. We could hear you snoring. OMG. <laughs> yes. It's bad. Got to make sure you put yourself on mute, Yar. Looks like you work nights or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually moving. Achha. Yeah, so I, yeah, I have to adjust some stuff. Yeah, just be careful with that mute button, bro. All right, Sayyid, I got you. Thank you. So, Sir Ali, uh, when are you going to be sending the uh, material? I'll send the material today. Okay, I got it. Later in the day. Okay. Right, so, thank you very much. And I'll no, be no problem. Getting off now. All right. Good night. All right.